Joining us now here in studio, Brigadier General Israel Relic Shafir, former commander of the Telnofa Air Force Base. Thank you very much, Brigadier General Shafir, for joining us. Well, uh, obviously, I'm, I'm struggling to disguise my 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 my, um, my frustration, uh, similarly to many uh, uh, here in Israel in recent days. Again, waiting for Hamas once again to, to make up its mind, uh, which brings me to ask: Maybe this is the time. You know, uh, the earlier days of the war, there, there was this talk on on, on creating or on going full mental jacket, right, to make sure that that, that all the neighbors here in the region will know uh, who who they're dealing with. Maybe. Uh, once again, there is a window um, to, to act that way. Enough is enough. Uh, <clears throat> I think we feel we are in a dire situation. And the, the atmosphere is uh, such as you described in your previous uh, conversation. Yeah. Uh, Hamas has uh, really no interest in making a deal now. Um, their, uh, their struggle as they put it, and as they dictated it in, in a way, is for a Palestinian state. And uh, if we recall, uh, in 1973, Sadat, the, who was the uh, president of, the, uh, of Egypt, said, I'm willing to pay a million soldiers to gain Sinai back. Right. And we didn't take him seriously. <clears throat> Eventually, the price was uh, a lot lower. But uh, we didn't take this seriously. War is a serious business. And as, as there's a saying, you may not be interested in war, but war, war is interested in you. you. Yeah. That means that you have to understand what the other side wants. And in this particular case, they're willing to fight to the last man, last man standing, which means that we have to chase them in their tunnels, wherever they're hiding, uh, day by day, for a length of time, and unless uh, uh, they get what they want, they may just linger on without bringing the hostages back and, and driving a hard deal while they're seeing us uh, lamenting and, and uh, yeah. frustrated the way that we are right now. Um, so uh, this is a moment of truth for us to face reality. So, so in this respect, Brigadier General uh, uh, Shafir, illustrating the current state of affairs that, that, that from which we, uh, we, we should understand what, what, what are our options to the future, it's either apply pressure on the source of the problem, as in Hamas, as in creating a situation in which Hamas realizes that it's not going to get any better. Uh, for for its standpoint, or to apply pressure on all those uh, stakeholders in between, U.S., Qatar, Egypt, something, someone will have to give, and at this point in time, it's only Israel. Yes, and it may stay that way uh, for a long time, because the, the U.S. has interests in its uh, southern belt of yeah. uh, moderate, uh, moderate Arab states versus Iran versus the Russians and China. Uh, they cannot support Israel fully because they will aggravate the moderate Arab states. So, uh, and the idea of a humanitarian relief that is something that I think a lot of Israelis look at, at this as something necessary for our own well-being in the sense that uh, these are people who may not like us, but their citizens are not involved in a war. So it's such a frustrating and difficult uh, moment to make decisions with the hostage situation, and it forces us to face reality. What does that mean? That means we have to look at the day after, something that the government has not done. So we have the government, which was not able to uh, reach a unison or reach even empathy towards the hostage families, and that is the basic problem because the hostage families felt that they're alone with the public supporting them against the government and certainly against the right-wing faction uh, who's threatening to leave the government if uh, they don't make the right decisions. So uh, this is really a dire political situation.
And to that point, exactly, Brigadier uh, General uh, Shafir, uh, uh, with uh, Benjamin Netanyahu's side of this uh, coalition again, again being scratched by the uh, thorn of, of uh, hawkish uh, Itamar Ben-Gvir. Um, today, the far-right minister giving uh, an extremely controversial interview, let's put it that way, to the Wall Street Journal, set to pose a major challenge. Netanyahu, is it really? Senior correspondent uh, Owen Alterman uh, takes a look inside Ben Gvir's uh, strategy. Back here in the studio with uh, Brigadier General Israel Relic Shafir. Brigadier General Shafir, more or less the same question uh, um, when, when we're talking about the Northern Front uh, to the one that we're asking when we're looking at the Southern Front. Israel is waiting. Uh, for some sort of a, a diplomatic process to, to, to materialize, uh, and, and if not waiting uh, for the Americans to, to green light any, any military action of sort. But bottom line, the strategic situation on the northern border remains the same for 121 days now. Yes, that is quite true. And uh, this is something that Israel has not experienced yeah. before. Certainly not uh, on the borders. We did have a war of attrition in uh, between 1968 and 1970. Uh, this is a time to bite the bullet, so to speak. Yeah. Israel has two options in the north, uh, with the uh, supposition that we need to push Hezbollah north so they're not able to have uh, direct eye contact with Israeli towns and fire missiles, yeah. as we've seen. There are two ways to, to do that, one of which is through the Air Force, start touching sensitive Hezbollah strong points such as Baalbek in the Beka Valley where the major Shia uh, communities are and where the Hezbollah uh, is ac actually the backyard of Hezbollah, mm -hmm. not in Beirut, which will cause a, an immediate, I guess, uh, full-scale war that nobody really wants. That's one place where we put pressure. The other part is use the experience of the special units um, in Gaza and start munching away in Lebanon itself by special units. The area is clear of civilians. Right. Right. Uh, the Air Force has full... Uh, clear of civilians on both sides. On both uh, sides. Lebanese uh, residents moved exactly. to the north and Israelis... We're talking, to yes. So anybody... Uh, 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 walking around or traveling around in South Lebanon is Hezbollah, right. which means that Not commando there to units sell lemonade. and yeah. the Air Force can put pressure and push them uh, further north. Uh, this will be a low-intensity uh, war that uh, will uh, not spur a full uh, a full-scale war, but will push. The Hezbollah forces up north, and I think the uh, defense minister uh, kind of hinted this by saying we haven't used our special units right. uh, on the border. So and that means not on the border. That means in Lebanon itself. So uh, I think this is something that we're going to see in the next phase. Uh, and, 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 you know, before we conclude this broadcast, Brigadier General uh, Shafir, by, by no means um, um, do I mean to, to, to imply that, that anyone here is, is warmongering or wants to see war. And yet, 121 days, the uh, residents of the North are refugees in their own country, and the prospects of them returning to their homes there without any uh, uh, change on the ground seems you know far-fetched far, far so so what what can be done not in terms of theoretical options but in terms of feasible options to to restore normalcy here in some sort of or capacity a war that's the way to restore peace there, war yes there's no there, there's really mm -hmm. uh there are no other cards to play with mm -hmm. um hezbollah uh are not only supporting Hamas, but they're working for uh, Iran. Right. And we saw the Houthis. Uh, these these guys uh, have, have a mission in life, and so do we. Right. And our mission in life, when we've had it uh, uh, a quiet period for quite a while, but this time we need to put our foot down because not only in this area of the world, but lots of places in the world, mm -hmm. if you're being bullied and you don't respond, 
uh, then you're going to, to be bullied the next day and it's going to get just worse. So that's been the Middle East for the last 3,500 years. And apparently it'll be so in the next while. Yes, well, I'm no longer a mother, but if and when I will have uh, 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 kids, God willing, um, and, and, and one of them will be bullied to give their lunch uh, to uh, their classmates, I will for certain advise them not uh, to give it for the second time. And it seems that Israel needs to be reminded of that uh, to an extent uh, at this point in time. And on that note, Brigadier General uh, Israel Relik Shafir, thank you very much for joining us on this uh, broadcast. And this is it uh, from us for today. Uh, but you can always stay updated by following us on uh, social media or online at 24news.tv, bringing you all the uh, latest updates from the ground, all the analysis you need. Day 121 of the war coming to an end. Hopefully it will be a peaceful, quiet night. Thank you very much for watching.